the, the, the thing that strikes me most about my uh, marriage certificate is that, frankly, you can write anything you like. All right? I could have written rocket scientist. No one is going to check. This could be the one official document that said I was some kind of brain surgeon. But I'm that sad I actually put down what I am, uh, which is a traffic engineer, and, uh, which is great. Um, not absolutely everything is my fault. But, but, but most of it, very little in this country, in fact, none in this country, you'd be glad to know, because although I did work with Conrad a little while ago, they kept me at arm's length very wisely. Um, and it's that perspective, though, on a traffic engine. I think a few questions this morning, and we all know that, frankly, people like me can crush what you might want to do with the public realm really, really easily. And we'll use all sorts of acronyms that you don't understand but sound very serious. We'll stroke our chins and suck our teeth and say it can't be done. All right? So I'm here to tell you uh, that we are normally not necessarily properly focused and may sometimes just possibly be trying to find the path of least professional resistance rather than trying to think about the bigger picture. Uh, we're obviously talking about this today. I'm sorry it's off centre. Well, I'm not. I've just tried to do something really naff with PowerPoint, that's all. And I want to keep the plus sign in the middle. So we're talking about Dublin in the public realm and this session is about urban design and movement and, and I want to just bring that slightly out further because I think we need to get, zoom out be, 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 a little bit further to begin with just this whole idea of cities and transport okay now the reason I want to do that is so I can do you my most exciting um, PowerPoint uh, animation ever the real problem about cities and transport is that for about the last 50 or so years we've done it this way We've forgotten about what we want our cities to be, and we've tended to try and solve a lot of transport problems. It's just the wrong way around. It's just the wrong way around. But we've got so used to it that we really struggle now. And there's a couple of perfectly reasonable questions this morning, like with tunnels or this. And what are we, what are we going to do about the traffic? Well, let's talk about that. Um, I've been reading a book, um, which is you know, not bad for a traffic engineer, actually, as opposed to just a manual. This is, was written in 1958. I literally just got it recently. I didn't know it existed. Um, C.D. Buchanan is a guy called Colin Buchanan, um, who uh, five years after writing this book in 58, uh, was basically the chief author of this seminal document, uh, 1963's Traffic in Towns, <clears throat> which basically scoped out, frankly, this kind of problem. And it recognized it very clearly, which is, if we are, actually it's very interesting, basically in, in the Traffic and Towns report, it essentially said, look, we've created a monster, and we love it. He uses those words, actually it wasn't even Buchanan's words, it was a steering group, a bunch of MPs, but we love it, dearly. And it gave us this challenge, it said, look, viewed at traffic, we all hate traffic when it's other people's cars, but viewed as my next journey, it's my greatest desire and a huge emancipation. And that's essentially what happened. Because of the things that the car offered us, they did a little bit like this to a lot of our cities. And traffic in towns is sometimes criticised in many ways, but actually really all it did was do, do some scenario testing. If we're going to live like that, if we're going to want to have the personal mobility that cars give us, this is what our cities are going to have to look like. And in part, we did that. It's an interesting quote here from Colin Buchanan. And, and, and it's just at the end of it, I've actually, like you always do, gone to the denouement. And he said, look, it's pretty grim reading because it isn't just a matter of building a few roads. The challenge we faced back in the 50s and 60s and obviously 70s and since, it is a matter of dealing with a new social situation. It's quite different what cars did for how we thought about our cities. And I think he was quite right to identify that we started back then to start to, to do a completely different thing to our cities that all the fires and tribulations and wars and whatnot previously had not done. Uh, in 1972, this chap, whose name is Donald D. Gilbert, um, the then uh, chair of the Highways and Transport Committee in uh, Newcastle, where I'm from, um, said this about a project. This is 1972. We will continue to work to achieve a moderate solution to the car versus city question. And their moderate solution was to turn this, which is part of northern Newcastle, uh, and that's my old school, bit of my old school playing field, uh, which I did play on, because I'm that old, um, it turned it out into that. That was a moderate solution. And, 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 and it was, it's easy to, 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 to point back, but this, this had very, very broad popular support. A huge amount of effort, the destruction, the money, all that was involved in this. There was large public, I wouldn't say acquiescence, but actually this is, this is what the future of cities looks like. 
And I'm only saying this now, really, because my probably my final slide, I think, is to say we're going to need something equally compelling as a public vision for what our city should be like if we're to get the kind of change, if we're to be able to deal with the kind of traffic problems that what you want Dublin or any city to be like uh, will have to address. It just so happened that last week I was dropping off my son in, uh, sorry, that's a picture of a, a big close-up, not far from my school, of, of the moderate answer to uh, the car versus city question. Those of you who know Newcastle, that's a town moor just to the north. Interestingly, they were about to build a big junction just at the top end, as far as you can see, and that caused a huge amount of fuss. And last Monday, we had our first working group. I've been asked to chair the working group of a lot of outraged people, councillors and others, about what are we going to do? And one of the things was, it was, to be honest, I think it's been great because people looked at the town mall with this great big new junction on it and said, no, no, not here. And so our, my take on that is absolutely fantastic. What you've said is transport as usual, which is a phrase I'll come to in a moment, isn't what we want anymore. Well, OK, how are we going to do it differently? How as a city are we going to, 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 to pioneer a path where it doesn't mean uh, uh, you know, the roads come first? Really challenging. As I say, I happened to drop off my son at university in Leeds the other day. This is the moderate solution they come up with at the same time. Um, it was a bit sad, actually, dropping off Huey in Leeds. Not because I was dropping off Huey in Leeds. Actually, it's delighted to get him out of the house, frankly. It's about high time he started to plan his way. But it, this was 37 years since I started in Leeds as well. So that was the sad thing about it. Um, and whatever Connor says, I do look old enough. Um, but they did something possibly even bigger. This has happened all over the place. OK, this is because we decided how we were going to do our cities. Something was said recently by Janet Sadiq Khan, who until recently was the Transport Commissioner of New York City, is this, and I thought it was really useful. I just want to uh, draw attention to a phrase I've already used, this idea of transportation as usual. If we are to have the kind of city we want here in Dublin anyway, if we're going to have the kind of public realm we want, which is basically the kind of place we want for people, we have to do transport in a different way. Because transport as usual basically deals with symptoms, not the causes. In other words, if you've got a big queue, how can we deal with your queue? Okay, how can we make it go away? Oh, okay, well, we could widen the junction or screw out some more capacity from the junction. We'll use phrases like RFCs and percentages and so forth and make it sound very plausible for why you now can't walk across it so easily or whatever it might be. Okay, it deals with that. And the problem about that is ultimately what transport as usual, this is transport as usual for the last 50, 60 years. It puts traffic before the city, it puts parking before people, which is quite extraordinary, and yet we are more concerned about what we do while we're driving, while we're getting a car, than when we get out. I think it was uh, Owen this morning, wasn't it? It said, actually, amazing, we all walk, everybody, you know, even as part of all the other journeys, and yet there's very little voice, which is why I'm delighted to be a trustee of uh, Living Streets, which is the UK charity for everyday walking. Uh, but it also essentially puts the means before the end, uh, or another way of thinking about that is, is that traffic, transport usual puts the cart before the horse. You know, isn't about the transport. The right way round, ask what kind of city do we want? And I say this as a traffic engineer, transport planner, head of the UK Transport Planning Society at the moment, interestingly. If you're interested, if you are a transport planner, we've just got a new branch here. Well, I wouldn't say branch, we've got a new nation. Republic of Ireland uh, Transport Planning Society do get involved. Um, it says, what kind of city do we want and how can transport help? That's the right way round. Okay, for the last 50, 60 years, because the problems were so big, big queues and all that sort of stuff, we just did get fixated on trying to solve the traffic problems, which meant the kind of moderate solution that that could be called moderate. But that was fine. I'm not blaming anybody. That's just how we thought at the time. And we're going to have to kind of take our cities back. Um, Transport, as usual, tends to go like this, which is... It's not going to work, mate. The junction won't work. OK, so you can't do it. Which is kind of fine until we challenge the... What do you mean by... It doesn't work for what or for whom exactly? But we've got used to it meaning it doesn't work for traffic. Therefore, OK, right, we'll have to build around it and we'll have to do all that kind of thing. We need to think about for the city. Transport, as it should be, says this, make this street how we want it. We are going to, so in order to do that, we're going to reduce the amount of traffic. So we'll use our models, yes, let's model, by all means, but to work out how we're gonna deal with that challenge, rather than using models to say you can't do what the city wants to become. I use that and I put it in a quote, he didn't use exactly these words, but some of you will recognize this chap, 
right? I heard him say more or less that about O'Connell Street. And uh, I happened to take a photograph. I'm delighted to say of O'Connell Street before, uh, probably about the time he was saying that, and that was 1999, I think. Um, and, you know, I was here in 2007, um, and I took this photograph. And obviously it's not quite like that today uh, for a number of reasons. But that's the idea, is basically we want this to be better, different. This is what we, the city wants it to be. We'll have to work the traffic around that. It's a challenge, but one you actually rose to here. And I was interested in reading through the 2012 um, public space strategy, a number of things, just a couple of excerpts here, but I don't know if you can quite see, I've underlined a little bit, cities are about people. That's a great way to start. That is a great way to start. Cities aren't about a bunch of technical, especially traffic technical problems that we need to resolve. They're about people first and foremost. But in this section about moving in the public realm, it quite rightly stresses the fact that these are really complex challenges, but they can be met, and O'Connell Street shows that that's possible. It also says, and again, this relates to the question about what are we going to do with the traffic, which is we're full, actually. How are we going to do things more space efficiently? There are some big challenges here, okay, but we do need to look at that. You know? And I suppose what I would say is if we just do transport as usual, we're full, I guess we'll have to knock something down or build a bit of extra capacity. To what extent are we, I, are we using money for that that we need to use for something else? Or for to, what, to what extent are we perpetuating movement patterns that just aren't healthy for the city as a whole and indeed for the individuals, citizens in it? Uh, this is perhaps a little bit of an extreme comment, but this is what Bertrand Delano, who was the previous mayor of, of Paris, said, and that's his view, which is basically, yes, to and from, but in, not really. And this is um, Anne Hidalgo, who used to work for Bertrand and is now the, the mayor, and you may know that uh, she didn't say that, but she's basically still acting on that. There's some major plans that are about to go forward, with which are re receiving a lot of opposition <laughs> about taking space back. Um, yeah, that's um, uh, John Norquist, who used to be another mayor, this one time of, of, of Milwaukee, and he's quite right, it does sometimes seem that. Uh, doesn't it? And that the focus we get on that, as if it's the most important thing in life. This is um, uh, Mary Queen of Shops, Mary Portis. Uh, she did this report um, for the British government and said, we need to do, we need to compete with the parking offer. And uh, she's Mary Queen of Shops. And actually, she said at the time, actually, I'm not terribly well qualified to do that. And she, by her report, really, really proved that she wasn't. Um, <laughs> This is something that was said about that, and I think that she needs to take. When you believe in things that you don't understand, then you suffer. Who said that? Okay. Yeah, Stevie Wonder. Um, that's true, and we, there's so much that we do because we think it sounds obvious. Mary Porter said that because everybody thinks we need more parking, we need to widen the roads. This here is... Um, a, a few streets in cities, um, sort of town centres and city centres, if we're to deal with the superstition, we need some data. In th each of these three years, T Transport for London did some really interesting research in a wide range of its centres to see how people travelled and how, what their contribution was to the economy. They did lots of other things, from the massive stuff like Oxford Street and Kensington High Street down to some of the more local centres. And each time, the story was the same. Really important to get this data, and maybe you'll need some for, for, for like uh, Mary Strong this morning, but we need stuff like this. If you have a look at average spend by mode per trip. Look what happens, cars first, very impressive, isn't it? You know, because when you turn up with a car, you fill the boot, okay? But if you look over a period, that spins around. Walking always, always wins in town and city centers. I've, I, this isn't just London, I've tried, I've looked everywhere I've looked, okay? You will find every piece of data I've got shows it in your town and city centers, this is kind of what happens, sorry to muck around with that that walking wins. That was 2009, different set of centres in 2011, basically the same pattern. Car per trip, but over a period of time, which is the key thing, the most valuable mode to your high street or your city centre, your town centre is walking. And cycling's not far off when you think about it, and that's with, frankly, pretty low levels of cycling and not very good provision for cycling in London until relatively recently, even, and even that's localised. Same again in 2013. This data is really useful. Because basically it shows how are your till receipts going home, right? Most of the going home in somebody's are by foot, essentially. This is good data. There's lots of it around. Every as I say, every time I've looked, I, I always ask the question. I use social media quite a lot in order to tell me some more, tell me different. And we're applying that kind of knowledge and understanding to some work in Glasgow at the moment. Uh, 
which is just a terrific project we're working on, um, which is basically to redesign all their city centre streets. They happen to have got... Somebody asked the money question this morning. Um, Glasgow happened to get a shed load, but they're going to spend it right, and we're helping them do that, I'm delighted to say. And it's basically the realisation that they have got in their city centre, most of their streets are roads, OK? And they are, they're, they're, they're traffic-dominated, they... Uh, but they could be so much better. And actually, you know, there is the space there. Yes, we're squeezing here, squeezing there. There's a lot of space allocated to parking that isn't used. Could happen in the side streets, could happen elsewhere. Uh, they have peaks, they have some queues, but in the city centre streets themselves, very short-lived, if at all. You can do this. And this is, a, as I say, I'm delighted to say it's a brilliant project, uh, possibly one of the best I've ever been involved with, because this is going to make some change, because they have the... The money behind it but they've not just got the money we're writing the report at the moment actually what i'll have to do over the weekend is is the economic and other rationales for doing this not just nice to have there are all sorts of ways and, and what was touched upon this by mary this morning this uh kathy this morning sorry there's tons of stuff um uh, out there if you look for it let's get it together let's talk the story because data is very important it's the kind of data we used when we did this project in camden about five years ago i don't know if you know camden terribly well, it's it's a place that's full of people Okay, it's, it's, it's fantastic, really, in many respects, if you like that kind of thing. Uh, but what happened was, it just, there was too much carriageway space, really. But what we looked at it was, you know, when you look at it, people are clutching there, but they tended to walk in the middle, uh, sorry, uh, they tended to spill over into the gutter. So a lot of the time, the traffic really wasn't using the space that was allocated. It was very inefficient. So we just rolled with that and put it down to a single lane and widened the footways. And the footfall went up, the number of people crossing. We did a lot of data collection there about that. The petty crime went down. All sorts of things happened because you just made it. You we designed it. So you get people like this guy here lounging across, okay? You get this woman here laughing, and I've got another L, and you get people wandering up in love. It's all very lovely, and all thanks to street design, okay? Um, so traffic engineers, traffic engineers, we do stuff. Uh, to be honest, I didn't try hard to get those pictures. You know, obviously when I saw these things, we didn't try hard, but we changed the dynamic in that street. It carries as much traffic as it ever did. The proportions are different. It just didn't need to be laid out that way. Now, sometimes it's not that easy. Obviously, you are taking uh, traffic, but will want to, will need to, take some effective capacity away from traffic. Um, but you can do that as well. We did that here. This is literally just the end of that high street. The high street goes off to the left there. That's what the junction used to be like. If you see the red lines there, that's the Transport for London road network, the trunk routes essentially. At the time, this was, you may take no capacity away from that. We were developing ideas for that, and we thought, well, you could do this with it, get rid of all that guard railing, simplify the crossings on the desire lines and all that sort of stuff. Sadly, Camden uh, didn't really want to go with the tree. They were going to have a separate public art project, so what was agreed was a project that looked like this. And the thing about the visualizations is they never actually happen, do they? which is just great that sometimes they do. And we show with this that there was a traffic hit on the red route, which kind of you can't do that. But actually the Deputy Mayor of London bought into this, and again this importance of leadership and articulating a clearer vision of a better public realm and a better Camden, uh, that we were able actually to do this in 2012, despite all that. And just to go back to, so that's what it was, and this is the space we got, and can be done even when traffic takes a hit. If you've got people of leadership who are prepared to take some of those hits. In Clapham Old Town, you can possibly see here, we've got restaurants and you've got a cinema there, quite a different kind of street altogether, yet it's a quiet street, to be honest, it leads virtually nowhere, dominated by traffic. Okay, we sold it could be like this, there was a struggling monthly market at the time, so it wasn't that you close it off, it could be like that, and again, it, it, it's pretty much like that. And you can see these people walking up. Traffic, you know, a car could be coming down there, but it's just proportionate. There, there is um, the traffic, there isn't that much of it. Um, and we lost no parking as well. We could squeeze that a little bit here and a bit round the corner there and behind me where you're not looking at it. And the struggling monthly market became a really flourishing weekly market. And on ordinary weekdays, it's just an ordinary street. And of an evening, it can be like this. You know, and again, there's that time, I think it was mentioned this morning, about different times of day. I just want to finish with some thoughts about this. You maybe recognise this kind of thing. Transport people have got reasonably good since, certainly in the UK in 2007 with the Manual for Streets. This is from 2010's Manual for Streets to this idea of it's not just about movement, it's also about place. That's quite vexed, what do we mean by place? And 
If you want to know Miami, the answer to that really is you have to ask the people in the place you are what that means here and how you get the balance right. But I think one of the things that can happen when it comes to public rail design is we change that slightly and it becomes something like this. Does it work and does it look nice? And I just want to touch on this because a lot of the work we do, quite often a lot of very well-meant work about public realm, is what, what will the picture look like? Does it look good? And I think we do need to keep the works in balance. The key thing about it is what do we mean by when it works well? Who is it working for? So, for example, if you're do talking about public realm and, and you're focusing all about how it looks right on there, but actually not really much about how it works. And sometimes that is done. That's done just because you take a, a view that the plans look fantastic. It went through co public consultation really well. People really like the look of it. But will it achieve all the flexibility, the demands that you want to place upon it for different things at different times? I haven't mentioned freight. Hugely important, the whole idea of how do we deliver stuff. You may well want to, to, to have a beautiful street, but actually you also want stuff on your shelves. Uh, and and you, frankly, you want your stuff delivered by Amazon. Uh, all this sort of stuff happens, okay? Obviously, when if it's no, not very good at either, that's not very good. And one of the problems we've had, obviously, in the past, we've focused much more on this uh, than the other. Yeah, and your optimal is that, but that's what we should be looking for. It needs to work well, your public realm, and look as good as it may. I suppose my point here is actually, if looks triumph over functionality, uh, we're, 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 we're setting ourselves up for a fall there. I think it is a, a good looking public realm is fantastic, but it better work. And it better work for people, not just for shifting tin. Um, just a, a, a thought of that, I had nothing to do with this and I'm not trying to pick on it. This is the kind of thing I can say, this is from Exhibition Road in, uh, near the museums in London, you might be familiar with it. Some brilliant um, uh, design, selling the design, the vision of the future, which interestingly has no traffic in it although there is some that you can see a couple of things. And we can show beautiful pictures from above when nobody gets to see it, and, but you can see the crisscross pattern there. You know, and that's a problem again, articulating views, visions through plans uh, from a view that nobody ever sees them. We've got to be careful about that. Um, and what's been delivered, I think, has a lot of merit to it. But I show this picture because the south bit we can see there as opposed to the north bit, it changes. And it's just this idea of understanding that balance. Okay, you've been really clever about your design. You really need to think about the specifics of place. And the thing about streets is they are so complicated and so complex, they will change every 50 meters, and you need to take that into account. So that's how a, one part of the northern section of the Exhibition Road used to look, and uh, it was a massively expensive project, I think 32 million, all told. Okay, that's a lot of money to turn that into that. Okay, that bit. Not much for your money there, some very nice lighting and a nice pattern if you can see it. Just a bit further down though, you're changing at an important place where people are going into out of museums and into a, in and out of Imperial College. That's the kind of change I would like to see. Further down again, that's what it used to be like and now that's what it's like. The traffic conditions are quite different, all different. Again, just thinking about how in context the looks, if we get in the balance right, are we spending our money wisely? bearing in mind the kind of function, what the place will be like when we're done. And so we're left with Dublin, aren't we? And uh, so that's fascinating. I looked at that before, and there's a little conversation uh, we had earlier about the area, what it covers and what it doesn't, and it's quite interesting. But I don't know if any of you have noticed this. This, for me, is probably the most important thing about this new initiative, which is that's where we are, okay? Has anybody thought of that? It does look like an animal. Sorry, I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry, I just... I, I just had to do that. It's, you know, be honest. It looks a little bit like a dog, a Scotty dog, doesn't it? Um, I don't, that's just for free. Okay, you can. But there is that question, isn't it? So there's the two things we're talking about today. We've spoken about the red and we're about to talk about the blue. We, there is a challenge, actually, it was one that was raised earlier. And the other bits? You know, this is about a city vision as well, and I know there are always lines and practically there are always challenges, aren't there? Everything we do stop, has to start somewhere, but within start and stop somewhere, but within a city, I think we do need to know how the whole is working and how each will relate to the other bits. Um, so there's a real challenge there for you for that. I just leave you with, with this picture here, which as you can see, if you can, on the right side, actually is the, um, the motto of Portland State University. I didn't know that until this morning when I was just Google searching for something I could finish with. Um, and, and I just think, let, we, could, we could just change that, couldn't we? 
we could change, say, let transport serve the city. Interestingly enough, in a city like Portland, which has got, frankly, it's one of the places you go to in America to understand what they've done, that is a pretty shocking piece of public realm, isn't it? Masses of lanes and a bloke on a bike having to about cycle on the footway. OK, that transport is not serving that part of that city, but that's really what we need to focus on and from my perspective. And I'll leave you with this. I, I hate, to, frankly, to leave you with adverts for Sky. Um, but this is the challenge, I think. We, you will face, especially from my perspective, with, with moving a lot of traffic and moving around, you will face a lot of challenges. Where is it going to go? It, will it, we haven't, we don't, what? It, it, that's a really good question. And actually, it's one that will be dealt with over the long term. It took us a long time to get to where we are. Okay, where will it go? Where will it go? We'll only be able to hold that ground if we do have clear leadership about the better kind of city. We've got a really clear, articulated vision of the fact. And it's in there as well already. But I think one of the things is sometimes just to bring that out. There's a strong public narrative okay, about there might be some short-term pain. You know that journey you do at the moment, it could get worse if you're driving across our city. That could get worse, but it's getting worse for this reason, okay? And then it'll get better because we'll give you other alternatives, okay? But we do need to articulate that vision if we're to be able to do transport as it should be, not transport as usual. Thank you very much.